Hey, how you doing Econ students? This is Jacob Clifford. A few weeks ago, I posted a new episode of Econ Movies talking about the economics in the movie Inception and the idea of mirrored concepts. The best example of a mirrored concept in macro is the short run aggregate supply curve and the Phillips curve. If you understand one, then you automatically understand the other one because they're flipped images of each other. But this idea doesn't just apply to graphs, there's also mirrored equations. They're not the same concepts, but they're mirrored. Let's start with five mirrored equations you're gonna see in your macro class. The most important one you're gonna see is the spending multiplier and the money multiplier. In unit three, you learn about the spending multiplier and the idea that initial change in spending becomes more spending as it becomes somebody else's income, they say some of it, spend the rest, that becomes somebody else's income, and that keeps going and going. The equation is one over the marginal propensity to save. In unit four, you learn about the money multiplier and the idea that banks hold a portion in reserve, loan the rest of that money out, that goes to another bank, it holds some in reserve, lends that money out, and that's how banks make money. That equation is one over the reserve requirement. Now these are two completely different concepts, but the equations are very similar. They're one over how much you save. And you're gonna use these a lot. Your teacher is gonna give you initial change in spending or initial change in the money supply, and you have to use these different types of multipliers. Another set of mirrored concepts you're gonna see is the CPI and the GDP deflator. The CPI is the value of a market basket divided by the value of that basket adjusted for inflation times 100. That's gonna pop out an index number that's not a percent, but you can quickly use it to figure out the percent change in inflation since the base year. The GDP deflator equation is the same idea, so if it's not a basket, it's everything in the economy. The nominal GDP divided by that same basket of everything adjusted for inflation, the real GDP times 100. Again, you're gonna get an index number that tells you how much price has changed since the base year. They're not the same concepts, but they're mirrored. Another example is the marginal propensity to consume and the marginal propensity to save. One is how much people consume of new income and the other is how much people save of new income. And remember, they always add up to one. So if you spend 0.8 or 80% of new income, that means you must be saving 0.2 or 20% and it all adds up to one or 100%. And the last one's not really an equation, but it's the idea of output questions and input questions when you're doing comparative advantage. In my hacks video, I gave you some tricks of OOO and IOU to figure out who has a comparative advantage. But you can remember if you're looking at an input question and all you know how to do is an output question, the answers for the input question on who has a comparative advantage will be the exact opposite. Cool, 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 cool. Pew. Okay, let's talk about mirrored concepts for microeconomics. First up is the idea of calculating marginal. You're gonna see it a lot. Marginal revenue, marginal utility, marginal cost, marginal product. Marginals all over the place in a microeconomics class. The equation is identical for all of them. It's the change in total divided by the change in quantity. Now, in most cases, the change in quantity is just gonna be one from 11 to 12 units. So it's really just the change in the total. Another example of mirrored equations are the four different types of elasticity. Elasticity of demand, supply, cross price and income. They're all basically the same equation. It's the percent change in quantity divided by the percent change in price. For demand and supply, that percent change in price is the product you're actually looking at. For cross price, it's the price of a different product. And for income, it's not price, it's a change in income. The point is, once you really understand one, it makes it a lot easier to understand the others. Probably the best example is the idea of the cost curves. Average fixed cost, average variable cost, and average total cost. The equations are exactly the same. They're the total divided by quantity. And remember, the average variable plus the average fix always equals the average total. That was easy. Now there's another set of mirrored concepts. One is in unit one, the other one's all the way in unit five. It's the utility maximizing rule and the least cost rule. For utility maximizing, you calculate the margin utility per dollar spent on some good, compare it to the margin utility per dollar spent for some other good, and you keep buying until you run out of money. You're trying to find the right combination of two different goods that maximizes your utility. The least cost rule is the same idea, except you're looking at the productivity of two different resources. You end up with the right combination of workers and capital to produce the most stuff at the lowest cost. That's why it's called the least cost rule. Again, two different concepts, but the equations are similar, they're mirrored. Okay, the last one for microeconomics is the most important because you're gonna use it the most, the profit maximizing rule. You always produce when the MR equals the MC, but that same idea applies in different units. For example, in unit five, you always hire workers where the marginal revenue product equals the marginal resource cost. And in unit six, the government should always produce a park with a marginal social benefit equals the marginal social cost. Again, these aren't really equations, but they're ideas that you're gonna see over and over again 
and they're mirrored. Okay, that was it. If you need help practicing all these different equations, make sure to take a look at the ultimate review packet. In there is an ultimate cheat sheet that has all the equations and all the graphs that you need to know. If you like this video, please leave a comment and be sure to subscribe. Till next time.